What's up, YouTube? This is your friendly neighborhood movie nerd back to give you guys everything that is going on in the world of movies as an affiliate of the Talkin' TV podcast. And I am back with the second annual Talkin' TV Awards. Obviously, things have changed a little bit since I did this last year, you know, when we were just right on the cusp of the pandemic as far as the TV that I was honoring. And now I'm honoring all the TV that dropped during the pandemic. And while the pandemic was a super dark time that we're still not entirely out of, I can safely say that TV was without a doubt the best part about it because we got some damn good TV shows this year. And in honor of the Emmys this past week, I am now going to be giving out my own batch of awards, the same that I did last year. So without further ado, here is the second annual Talking TVs. Very cool. Perfect. I want to hear everything. Tell me the best part. But alas, first, we must pay touching tribute to the one show that we lost this season, that of course being Kim's Convenience, of course Chris's favorite sitcom of the last five years that he would not shut up about, at least into, at least when we first met up again after college right before we started this podcast. An absolutely beloved sitcom that certainly had its fair share of problems, but for the most part was something really intriguing and really engrossing and really offered something new to that format. And while the fifth season was rocked with production problems both due to the COVID-19 pandemic as well as Simu being in Australia shooting Shang-Chi during it, on top of an improv to cancellation, the show still ultimately managed to pull together a really touching and really heartwarming finale for its final episode, and we will miss it. I'm I'd I'd peak. Kim's convenience. Kicking off the award ceremony, we have the award for best debut TV show. Now bear with me here, because there are a lot of great shows that debuted this past year. The nominees are Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy on Netflix, Star Wars The Bad Batch on Disney Plus, Industry on HBO, Invincible on Amazon, Hacks on HBO Max, The Queen's Gambit on Netflix, Mayor of Easttown on HBO, I May Destroy You on HBO. But the winner is Apple TV Plus's Ted Lasso. With nothing but a positive grin, a goofy looking mustache, and a never say no attitude, Jason Sudeikis in his brand new TV show that mixes American and British sensibilities, won over the hearts and minds of everyone during the pandemic. Congratulations, Ted Lasso. You have officially won the first Talking TV award of the night. Next, we have the award for best writing on a TV show, awarding all the people who truly make all of our favorite shows come to life. The nominees this year are Scott Frank for The Queen's Gambit, Mickey Down and Conrad K for Industry, Dave Filoni for Chapter 13, The Jedi from The Mandalorian Season 2, Matt Wolpert and Ben Nadivi for The Grey for All Mankind Season 2, Ariel Carlin and Jen Statsky, I Think She Will, Hacks, Brad Inglesby, Mayor of Easttown. And the winner is Michaela Coel for I May Destroy You Easily, one of the most thought-provoking, in-your-face, awesomely engaging, transformative television experiences of the year of 2020. This show changes up the way we view comedy, the way that we view sexual assault, the way that we viewed the Me Too movement, and just sought to examine every single aspect of that. And for that, Michaela Coel absolutely deserves this win. The next category is for Best Directing for a TV Show. And honestly, this category is becoming even more jam-packed than the Oscars for Best Directing. Because the amount of shit that these directors are able to do now on the small screen, just given the accessibility to technology that these streamers provide with their money is insane. So here are my nominees for Best Directing for the Talking TVs. Jan Damon for the pilot of Lovecraft Country. Michael Uppendale for East West from Fargo season four. Robert Rodriguez for chapter 14, The Tragedy from The Mandalorian season two. Dave Filoni for chapter 13, The Jedi from The Mandalorian season two. Craig Zobel for Mayor of Easttown. And the winner, easily without a doubt, Scott Frank, The Queen's Gambit. Scott Frank knocked it out of the park with this one, managing to eject all the awesome stuff that we love about period piece TV shows into arguably a seven piece sports drama and for this to be the show that captivated people during the months in between the boys and the mandalorian during the pandemic more than earns at this spot next up we have best tv duo which is an original category that i came up with last year basic criteria for this category is it basically just has to be an on-screen pairing that really i would say set the tone and probably garnered the most attention between their chemistry for any different number of reasons on the show and the nominees for this year are harper collins and eric tau from industry Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence from Cobra Kai Season 3. Arabella Essiedu and Terry Pratchard from I May Destroy You. Homelander and Stormfront from The Boys Season 2. Mayor Sheehan and Colin Zabel, Mayor of Easttown. And the winners are Deborah Vance and Ava Starr, portrayed by Gene Smart and Hannah Einbinder, respectively, for the debut season of Hacks. Easily one of the funniest pairings that I've seen on screen in a long time. It's a typical combination of Baby Boomer meets Gen Zer, and the pairing works incredibly well. The two truly do bring out the best of each other, and it really is the relationship that is the driving force of this show. 
Next up, we have the guest category, starting out with best actress. And just to remind people about my specific criteria, in order to qualify for this category, the actor has to appear in at least half of the show or less. If it's more than half the show, they do not qualify. And for guest actress, the nominees are Kate Siegel for The Haunting of Bly Manor, Ellie Taylor for Ted Lasso, Katie Sackoff for The Mandalorian, Season 2, Tamlin Tamita for Cobra Kai, Season 3, Phyllis Somerville for Mayor of Easttown. And the winner is Rosario Dawson for The Mandalorian Season 2. I mean, come on. We finally got live action Ahsoka. Come on. Now for Best Guest Actor. And the nominees are Noah Harpster for All Mankind Season 2. Bill Burr, The Mandalorian Season 2. Glenn Turman, Fargo Season 4. Ziz Ansari, Master of None, Lessons in Love. Daniel Brühl, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And the winner is Courtney B. Vance for Lovecraft Country. Another one that I had in common with the actual Emmys this year. Man, that just shows what slim pickings there were. But I think it's safe to say, and I made my thoughts very, very clear and very, very apparent last year when we were recapping Lovecraft Country week to week, which is that the minute that they killed off Courtney B. Vance, that is when the show plummeted in my eyes. And it looks like pretty much everyone agreed with me. Next, we have the category that is probably the most near and dear to my heart, that being the voiceover category. I've been very, very vocal in my thoughts that they really need to expand this category outside of the typical whatever adult comedy is most popular in the moment. In this instance, Big Mouth. Welcome back, bitches! But these are my nominees for who I thought gave some of the best voiceover performances this year. Jason Marnoka for Transformers, the War for Cybertron trilogy. Jake Fouché for Transformers, the War for Cybertron trilogy. D. Bradley Baker for Star Wars, The Bad Batch. J.K. Simmons, Invincible. And the winner is Steven Yeun for Invincible, a part that could have so easily fallen into type territory, but he actually manages to add a lot of surprising nuance and gravitas to this part. This is a show that I definitely liked a lot more than I thought I was going to, especially given that this is one of the first couple shows after WandaVision that fell victim to the internet's meme ability, but definitely proves that Robert Kirkman properties still have a place in today's pop culture sphere. Now we get into the big four categories, the ones that are the most victim to awards fraud, specifically this category, that of course being Best Supporting Actress. And the nominees are Marissa Abella for Industry, Aya Cash for The Boys Season 2, Jesse Buckley for Fargo Season 4, Hannah Einbinder for Hacks, Waruche Opia for I May Destroy You, and the winner is Julianne Nicholson for Mayor of Easttown. I mean, look no further than her last scene with Mayor. Oh man, we have got a doozy of a category for you this time, and I am very, very excited because I think that this is the only category where I have one nominee in common with all the three different supporting actor categories. And the nominees are Michael Dorman for All Mankind Season 2, Ben Wishaw, Fargo Season 4, Papa Essiedu, I May Destroy You, Ken Leong, Industry, Wyatt Russell, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And the winner is, for a second time in a row, Anthony Starr for The Boys. I know, sure, marketed him for lead for the actual award ceremony, but as far as I'm concerned, Butcher and Huey, to an extent, are still the main characters of this show. Even though Homelander did have a more extensive role this season, he's just still, like, one of the best things about TV. And this is the year that also gave us two other evil supermen on TV. Well, not really. One definitely evil, one sort of kind of beneficial. I don't know, Jupiter's legacy he came and went so quickly that I forgot to add it to the show's The Memoriam. Oh man, I was dreading this category. This is easily, I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone knew this going into this year's Emmy ceremony, but this is without a doubt the most loaded category. I mean, I did what I could in order to add my own original spice to this, but like, fuck, this re these really were some of the best performances of the year. Forget just television, just across all mediums, just in general, for best actress. And the nominees are Mayala Harald, for Industry, Elizabeth Olsen for WandaVision, Gene Smart for Hacks, Michaela Coel for I May Destroy You. And the winners are split tie between Anya Taylor-Joy for The Queen's Gambit and Kate Winslet for Mayor of Easttown. I was debating, I was going back and forth, I was trying to weigh out to see if one had one thing over the other, and it really sucked because, again, these were two of my favorite performances for this past television year. So I just decided to award them both. Screw it. It's my own award ceremony. I can do what I want. Next, we have Best Actor. And I'm not going to lie, guys. This category sucked this year. Across the board, drama, comedy, miniseries. I really feel like I had to scrape the bottom of the barrel in order to get some of the best performances here. Because it was just, it was not good. Just to put this in perspective, most of these other categories I have between six and seven nominees. This category, I only had five. And without further ado... The nominees for Best Actor are Jonathan Majors for Lovecraft Country, Anthony Mackie for The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Paul Bettany for WandaVision, Joel Kinnaman for All Mankind Season 2. And the winner, without a doubt, 
Jason Sudeikis for Ted Lasso. I have made my thoughts known on the first season of Ted Lasso. I was not the biggest fan of it in the way that everyone else was, although I am adoring this current season that's airing right now. But I will say that Jason Sudeikis' performance in this show truly was a revelation to the world of television, and he more than deserves this. And that's usually a pretty hard sell for me to award a comedy performance over a drama performance, because anybody who knows me knows that comedy usually always takes second to my beloved dramas. Last award of the night. The big one, the big kahuna itself, best overall show. I like to think of myself as a little bit more forward thinking than the Emmys and that I don't prejudice based on whether a show's a drama, a comedy, a miniseries, some strange genre bending combination of those three. I award all shows equally here on the Talking TV Network. And without further ado, these are some of the shows that I consider to be some of the best demonstrators of television storytelling for the TV ceremony of 2020 through 2021. The nominees are The Boys, Season 2 on Amazon. For All Mankind, Season 2 on Apple TV+. Plus. Hacks on HBO Max. The Mandalorian, Season 2 on Disney+. Plus. Mayor of Easttown on HBO. Queen's Gambit on Netflix. And the winner is, and this should come as no shock to anyone because again, this was my absolute favorite TV show of 2020, I May Destroy You. This one, I'm not going to lie, is a little bit of a tough sell because, again, it didn't hit nearly as much of, like, the popular pop culture media Twitter landscape that Mayor of Easttown or the Queen's Gambit did as far as originality within its memes. It also didn't have necessarily the big budget that, say, shows like For All Mankind, The Boys, or The Mandalorian did. But, again, this is a show that really, really pulled off the impossible in that it's about an absolutely traumatic subject matter that happens to, I would say, a very, very unlikable character character, at least for the first couple of episodes of this show, that's told in a really smart, really funny, and really compelling way that truly feels like it has a beginning, middle, and end that examines all sides of the issues involved without feeling too preachy and without sacrificing anything from a storytelling perspective. I think that this right here is the absolute perfect demonstrator of everything that TV was striving for with this past TV year. And that was it. That was the second annual Talking TV Awards. What did you guys think? Are you glad that I brought this back. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What did you prefer this year's ceremony or last year's ceremony? If you preferred last year's, I completely understand. I was a lot more just fun and jovial with that one. But whatever your thoughts are, leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to also click the subscribe button, click the like button, click the bell next to it. That way you guys get notified every time we put up new content. You guys know the drill. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Talking TV Podcast. And as always, people remember 12 seasons in a short film and watch more fucking movies. We'll see you guys next time. Oh,